a lot of people, they say, I need to manifest X, Y, Z thing by like this date. And that can work for some people. The people that work really great under pressure, I feel like they have success with that methodology. I don't. I, you give me pressure, I will not manifest a thing. So I like to extend the timeline and look at it as like over the course of my lifetime, can I make this happen? If we tap on the on the business front, there is somebody who hears this and hears like, this is woo. This is not for me. This is a little weird. Like there are people, a different sect who've been, okay, so I... I've been thinking like I'm living already as if, and then they mm -hmm. go through their launch, their product drop services, new offerings, yeah. and it doesn't happen the way yeah. that they had imagined. So they feel burned and they're like, this is, yeah. so let's go through the process of something that was in total alignment for you. And then something that wasn't like, how do you know you're in alignment in the middle of it to not end up on the backside of it? Wondering like, why not? So something I like to tap into is I like to think about the finished completion, having the goal. And I ask myself, does it feel good to have done? Meaning when I'm on the other side of it, is this still something that I really want? And if it is, I don't give up no matter what. Mm. So just because something doesn't work your way, like I just see it as a redirection. I just see it okay. as a way that it won't work. That's it. It's not the way. It's just a way that it won't work. So my first like three launches in my business, like nobody signed up. Like my first launch, nobody signed up. What were you selling? Um, I was selling this program called, um, shoot, become the happiest version of you or something like that. And it was just like a four week course where I wanted to create like a group program. So I wanted to like coach people in a group setting and I had one-on-one -on -one clients at the time. And I was like, okay, how do I expand from Got that? It. Uh, I think one person signed up the first launch, second launch, nobody signed up, third launch. I'm like, all right, this isn't working. And I just realized it's not me. It's the course. Like it's, it's not me. It's just like, do I really want to do group coaching or maybe do I want to branch out into like not coaching, not, not feeling like I need to trade my time for money. Maybe I just want to do a course where people can sign up. I don't have to show up. And then they just buy things from me. So my next course that I created was like that. And that's what ended up being successful. Like that's what really skyrocketed manifestation, babe, was January 2017. Because mm. in all of 2016, my business made $9,000. In 2017, it made 600K. Like it was wow. a massive quantum yeah. leap. Wow. And it's just, it's just knowing that here's the thing. A lot of people, they get sucked into timelines. And timeline, yes. it's a toxic, <laughs> toxic thing because what is time anyway? Time is a human created construct. It literally doesn't exist. If you didn't have a watch or a clock or you didn't see the sunset and rise, like you wouldn't know what time it is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, a lot of people, they say, I need to manifest X, Y, Z thing by like this date. And that can work for some people. The people that work really great under pressure, I feel like they have success with that methodology. I don't, I, you give me pressure. I will not manifest a thing. So I like to extend the timeline and look at it as like over the course of my lifetime, can I make this happen? And of course the oh, answer is good. yes. For the most part, that's like people good. are like, yeah, over the course of my that's entire good. lifetime, can I think of ways that I could create a six figure business or seven figure business or whatever? And it, it seems so much more possible when mm -hmm. you just branch it out and extend it. Or the other hack that I like to do is I call it the ladder of believability. So I ask myself, Yes, eventually I'll get to this goal, but what is a smaller goal that I can actually energetically get behind right now in this moment? Like it's a stretch for me. I definitely mm -hmm. encourage people to stretch themselves. It's a stretch, but it's not so far fetched where I'm going from making $10,000 in a year to like a million dollars. Yes, that's possible. But if you don't fully believe in it, believe that it's possible for you because belief is what drives behavior. You're not going to actually behave like it's possible then it's not going to work. So you want to either decrease the goal temporarily until you go up these ladder yes. rungs, these stepping stones, or extend the timeline and just be like over the next 10 years, over the next 20 years. And what that ends up doing is it ends up getting your energy behind the goal to where you're like, okay, this launch didn't work out. That's fine. This thing didn't work out. That's fine. But I still have my entire lifetime to get to this goal. Mm. And then once you release the pressure, it's like you can breathe, you feel free, you feel light, you feel energized. And pressure does something else to the subconscious mind, which it equates pressure. It equates needing something as life or death. So it actually puts you in your, into survival mm -hmm. mode where you go into fight or flight. And what happens in fight or flight is 
uh, blood leaves the brain and goes into your legs so you can run super fast or it goes into your jaw so you can bite someone really hard. Anger mm. into the jaw, fear into the legs. And like, Stop. yeah, that's useful <laughs> if you're running from a predator or you're trying to bite someone like actually like bite. Good to know. But it's not <laughs> useful to have blood leave your brain when you are doing not anything else. Right. <laughs> right. Anything else. Right. right. And when you're in a launch, you need some blood in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so it will cut you off from intuition. It'll cut you off from logic. It'll cut you off from strategy, from focus, from joy, from humor, all these things that from finding solutions and possibilities and all those things are a lot more useful than running really fast in the middle of a launch, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So when you shift energy from being a need, like I have to have this happen, like you just, you want to control everything mm -hmm. and you transition it into a bonus energy, where it's like, I want this, but I don't need it. I don't need it to um, affect how I see myself. I don't need it to be considered a great entrepreneur. I don't need it to feel abundant. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think they need to have lots of money to feel abundant. No, there's money all around you. Just like sit in your house and look around. Like your phone is a representation of money. This painting is a representation of money. Like your car is a representation of money. There's money in abundance all around you. So it's all how you think about it. It's all how you frame it, right? And so in those periods, like you really want access, you want full brain, full blood in your brain. And so you want to create bonus energy and bonus energy is like I said, like I want it, but I don't need to have it. Mm -hmm. And that changes everything. That's where manifestation feels like it's instant because you already feel like you have it because for, for as far as you know, the reason why you want things is because of the way that you think it's going to make you feel. Mm -hmm. So if you can conjure up those feelings already without actually having that thing it's basically like you already have that thing and when you are in the energy of already having that thing like the next step the next obvious step energetically is it's going to be brought into your reality mm. what happens we have all if these you, questions you, I'm I'm like, like, hold, hold, on, hold on okay <laughs> so I can think of times when it's like Yes, I practice that over and over. Like, okay, I don't. <laughs> All the blood need was in it. your brain. I don't need it, except your back is up against the wall and stuff is getting tight and like yeah. a, a desperate energy where you yes. are. Yeah. Your yes. life is reflecting. You are desperate. You need this. Yes, it's it's all perception of mind, right? Like, who is creating the timeline in the first place? Who's mm -hmm. creating this idea that you need this or else something bad's going to happen? Like, it's all your perception. As far as like we're concerned. The only thing that matters is that you're breathing, you're alive, you have basic needs like that. Anything beyond that is bonus energy. And you are create you're the one who is looking at it from an angle and a perspective and a belief system that's causing that pressure to begin mm -hmm. with. So we are basically in charge of the stresses, in charge of the anxieties, in charge of all this stuff that's affecting us. OK, so. When you look at the juxtaposition between the launches that didn't work and your biggest launch, yeah, what are some of the key lessons in your biggest launch that allowed you to hit that revenue number? Who were you? Yeah, I was a much more relaxed version of myself. Mm -hmm. That's for one. I know that in the launches that um, didn't work out, I was very like... Um, I want to say like superstitious and ritualistic and like thinking in ways of like, oh my God, yesterday I drank this much water and we had this many signups. So I have to drink that much water today. Right. Or like, oh my God, this, uh, my husband just picked a fight with me. And so therefore it's not going to be as good of a day. Right. Like you just, I just, I just got so like into fear mm -hmm. and into like something bad is going to happen. And the launches that successful, like I lived the most normal days. I, if I treated my launches, especially the enrollment days, like any other day in my business, they would be the most successful because at that point, it's like, it's already done. Mm. Like at that point, it's already done. It's just a matter of mechanics. Like the energetics are there. It's a matter of mechanics. And if it doesn't happen this launch, again, it's giving myself permission to learn from this experience. And who's in charge of these launches in the first place? Like who created the concept of a launch? I did. I'm the one who set the dates. Mm. If this one doesn't work out, I can choose the next month, choose new dates and reopen cart and try it all over again. Like we just mm. create all of these perceptions of pressure that aren't even real in the first place. Mm 